uh, we shall start with today's class so earlier in early in our earlier class we had tried to understand what do we mean by financial management what are its nature and what are its characteristics along with some of the definition of financial management so in our today's class let us try to understand what is the scope of financial management now to put it in very simple words scope refers to the areas what a particular thing is going to cover what are the different activities or what are the different works that can be conducted or is included under the umbrella of one particular might be subject discipline or under one particular area now as we discussed in our earlier class we had we were clear in mentioning that financial management is concerned mainly towards the financial activities of a business firm so when we tell that here we are trying to differentiate the financial activities of a firm from the rest of other activities of an organization so if that is the case what are the things that are included under finance even before putting forward that question we'll have to question ourselves what is finance in a very basic way what do you mean by finance and also what are the different financial activities of a firm and the third question is how is that this financial activity is related to all other different activities of the firm so when we try to answer these three question definitely we will understand what is the scope of financial management for an organization now to put it in a very broad manner firms create manufacturing capacities for production of goods or sometimes for services also now that is to tell a firm which situates the main intention of that firm would be either to create some kind of goods or some kind of services now they sell their goods or services with the main intention or basic intention of earning profit and in manufacturing and earning profit they raise a fund to acquire manufacturing and other facilities that is to tell yes the main work is manufacturing or providing a service later on we either sell we sell it for others for the profit but for manufacturing itself we will have to acquire some of the manufacturing facilities so uh, every business organization that is being set up there would be three most important activities first one being production second one being marketing and the third one 
which makes the first two activities possible that is finance to put it in very very simple words a firm secures all the capital that it needs and employs it these two makes up the finance activity now when they acquire it and when they employ it or allocate it they do all these activities with the intention of earning profit or getting a return on what they have invested on capital now this activity which generates the returns of or returns on invested capital makes up the production and marketing activities now all these things what we are discussing right now we'll have to understand it word by word point by point financial management becomes very interesting or easy to deal with only when we try and understand what are the different things that are being included in it so moving forward in the direction of scope and scope of financial management it is important for us to understand many terms which are related to financial management the first one there is real and financial assets okay no matter which firm it is be it a ma manufacturer oriented be it a service oriented company now the real assets is very much necessary for any business organization that is being set up might be the assets be less in value or more in value but these real assets or tangible assets becomes very very important now when we speak about real assets there are two different kinds of real assets first one is tangible real asset second one is intangible real asset now what are these tangible real assets now these tangible real assets are physical assets in simple words to tell tangible means which could be seen through eyes the presence of which could be felt with the touch now when it comes to a business organization tangible real assets mainly includes plant machinery office factory furniture and building now the second one is intangible real assets now intangible real assets is nothing but what is contradictory with tangible these assets 
definitely has value in the firm's assets but the presence of which cannot be seen but definitely the function of all this could be seen through the working of the organization's activities but it cannot be touched with the bare hands now intangible real assets includes mainly technical now how technological collaborations patents and copy rights now technological now how is nothing but how very well is technology is being used by the organization there are different organizations which has its own okay now there are some of the different organization uh, which develops its own technology its own innovation and if at all they provide they prove to be very successful in the market there are chances that they can become the market leaders and also there is chance that if their technology proves efficient enough sometimes they can also even sell it to some other people or if at all there is some other organization with whom you can come into a deal of exchanging technology it is called as technological collaboration now patents and copyrights you definitely know what it is now moving forward the next one is financial assets so we spoke about tangible assets intangible assets are the two different kinds of assets that our organization has so now what is this financial assets how is it different is it different is it same what is it does it includes in tangible assets or does it include in intangible asset what are this financial in assets now uh except for the plant and machineries the vehicles the furniture the office the building except all these things there are some other assets which are organization has and these are especially called as financial assets to give example it could be securities financial papers or instruments in simple words put forward the shares the bonds the debentures is called as financial assets now usually when it comes for large organization they definitely go for issuing of shares now issuing of the shares is first time done in the primary market or for the first time when a company issues the capit uh, the shares for the public it will be issued in primary capital market the main intention of issuing shares in the market would be for raising of the necessary fund that is required by the organization in the primary market only the issuing of the shares would be done all the dealings buying and reselling it or buying and selling it would be done in secondary capital market now this secondary capital market is also referred to as stock exchange 
and one more thing that you will have to remember is that this financial assets will also include something called as lease obligations might be borrowing from banks or some other different institutions and other sources also now when you borrow funds from may, might be some of the banks some of the financial institutions or through any other source it is called as debt or in simple words loan but under financial management we usually use the term debt and capital so whenever i tell debt it acts as a loan whenever capital we speak of capital it is nothing but what money the organization has now one more thing that we discussed here was lease now lease is such a function where there would be two people one is the lesser and one more is the lessee the one who gives the permission is being called as lesser the one who gets the permission is called as lessee what happens under this lease obligation is that the lessee obtains a right to use the lessor's asset but and definitely he would be getting this right to use the asset for an agreed amount of rent and along with this agreed amount of rent there shall be time period also fixed for it that is to tell the right would be given for certain time period might be 1 year 10 years 15 years it depends upon the agreement and for using those rights the lessee has to pay some kind of rent or return to the one who gives him the right for using his assets now the next one that the next term that is to be understood here is equity and borrowed funds equity and borrowed fund okay now as the name suggests these two one being equity the second one being borrowed funds these two types of the assets are the main types of assets through which one organization or for that matter any organization raise the capital that it needs in other words the borrowed funds are nothing but the debts now debt is something that you that is not owned by the company it is just being borrowed from a third party and after a certain time period the company has to give back this to the person from whom it has borrowed it now coming back to your equity equity in simple words is nothing but shares shares of a company is called as equity now every company sells it sells its equity to acquire sells it 
I mean, sorry, sells the shares to acquire equity funds. One thing you'll have to remember, and the one main difference between equity and borrowed funds is that equity shares or shares will always represent the ownership right of the holders unless like the funds now the buyer of these shares are called as shareholders or stockholders now these shareholders or stockholders are regarded as the legal owners of the firm now they are the owners of those companies from which they buy the equity shares now every individual who is going to invest in equity share they do this with the expectation of a return on their invested capital now when we speak about this return a equity shareholder gets return in two forms first one being dividend second one being capital gain now a shareholders especially equity shareholder gets dividend whenever a company in which they have invested declares the dividend now they will have capital gain or capital loss when they sell their equity shares when the face value of their shares would be sold for much more value or whenever the market value of their shares is more than the face value a investor is going to on capital gain and whenever the face value of their shares is more than the market value a individual investor is going to experience capital loss now speaking about shareholders there are two different types of shareholders first one being equity shareholder equity shareholder second one preference share holder now what might be the difference between these two types of shareholders either be it a equity shareholder or a preference shareholder now a equity shareholder i mean a preference shareholder will have preference over the declaration of dividend or repayment of capital when the company would be wound up okay now preference shareholders receive dividend at a fixed rate if what would be the rate of dividend would be mentioned priorly but when it comes for a equity shareholders there will not be any fixed interest of dividend that the company is going to give neither 
a company will have any kind of you know any kind of obligation that it has to pay dividend for the equity shareholders it solely depends upon what the company decides at the end of every year they can either retain all those profit or give dividend for equity shareholder but as far as preference shareholder is concerned it is the obligation of the company that they give the dividend and also at what percent it has been mentioned should be given for the preference shareholder and also as the name suggest they have preference over the payment of dividend and also the repayment of the capital and also the dividend rate of equity shareholders will never be fixed it varies from year to year and also there is no certainty that every year equity shareholders would get any kind of dividend okay and because the equity shareholders are those person who would get any kind of return at the end or after every obligation of the company is being completed might be paying of paying paying of the debtors comes first later on paying of the preference shareholders come and if at all there is still profit and if the company decides the company is going to give out the dividend only then the equity shareholders will get the dividend hence they also have got themselves a name called as the owners of residue that is to tell these people are the owners of what is the remaining it might be less it might be more but they represents the ownership of all those that is remaining now one more thing that we'll have to remember regarding the dividend is that when it comes for corporate tax this dividend paid by company is definitely not a deductible expense for calculating the corporate income tax okay after giving all the kind of interest repayment of debt after everything the dividend for shareholders are paid out of profit that to after deducting the corporate tax so as per the current law a company requires to pay 12.5% tax on dividends okay now a company definitely needs to have profit to give out uh, give out its dividend but it is not the obligation from the side of the company that it should compulsorily give out dividend for its equity shareholders now a company has one more option of retaining this profit to itself and when a company decides to do so it is called as retained earnings or retaining earnings available for shareholders and this retained earnings is also referred to as internal equity you can call it as internal equity you can call it as retained earnings it simply rep- represents the undistributed profits of equity capital 
now this amount or this profit or the fund which the company retains can be considered as a form of raising capital in other words it can be used for giving bonus shares now why does the a company does this okay now when you have profit in your hand okay you give out yes the shareholders will have a good image on your company but you'll always have to remember that you'll have to pay tax on that first second thing if at all you need the money for some other purpose you again have to do some of the expenses to you know raise the funds it can be through the issue of new equity shares can be by borrowing from others but it definitely includes expenses so when a company understands is that understands that the expenses would be more in raising new type of equity or borrowed funds it usually retains its fund what it already has and gives it form in the form of bonus share now what happens with bonus share is that i am a company the name of my company is ab company i have many shareholders might be youth 30 as my shareholders now the company earns profit okay there are some other 30 preference shareholders also i have given dividend for my preference share also but then now what profit i have to i have in my hands i can decide either to give it for you all equally based on how much shares you have or to retain it and if i retain it and if i'm going to give bonus share what i'm going to do is that whatever profit i have i am going to equally distribute it in your name each person each share would be according to how much shares you already have so when we do that what happens is the extra in expenses that would be included in might be giving out the dividend or might be getting the funds again would be reduced the money is definitely yours but it would be reinvested in the form of new shares so the next time when the company is going to give dividend you will going to get dividend on what shares you earlier had plus the bonus shares that you have now okay now whenever the company goes again for public issue there are two different kinds one is a right share or a public issue public issue normally represent the same how it has done earlier right issue is that the shares are new it is not the bonus shares the shares are entirely a new set of shares but the shares would be given for the existing shareholders themselves that is called as right share so you'll always have to remember that there is very much difference between right shares and bonus shares there is also difference between equity shares and preference shares do not get confused make points of all these things i will also be giving points for you all but do not get confused now speaking about all this equity we'll have we should also check what are these borrowed funds now these borrowed funds are equally important as much as how important the equity shares are for an organization now this borrowed funds now this borrowed funds are also called as creditors fund 
or lenders fund those who give those funds for the company are called as creditors or lenders now the very main difference between the creditors and the equity shareholders is that creditors are never the owner of a company or the lenders can never be owner of a company now these lenders or creditors they make money available for the firm and they make it available for the firm in the form of a loan or debt and they would be retaining the title to the funds lent that is to tell the loan would be given to the company the company accepts the loan under the name of a lender or a creditor who has given it to them now unless like the equity this loans are generally given out for a fixed period of time and for a fixed rate of interest now for the one who gives a loan for the company he would be earning returns on what he has given in the form of interest paid by the firm okay now interest is a cost of debt so as we discussed in today's class there are two different things one is dividend one is interest whatever you give to the owner of the company is nothing but the dividend the name is dividend and whatever you give to the third party that is termed as interest now the feature of the interest is that interest becomes a source of deductible activity for your income tax that is to tell after all the things has been deducted from your earnings before calculating your profit you can always deduct the total amount of the interest that is being paid out for the lender or the creditor because paying the interest is one of the legal obligation of a company that it has to do so for every organization whenever it pays out the tax the tax i mean pays out the interest the interest acts as a tax shield it becomes very very valuable for the company because interest would not be in hundreds or thousands for a large organization when it borrows fund from third parties the interest is going to be in hundreds of crores so when you definitely deduct it out of the profit the amount of the tax that you will have to pay for the government will definitely be very very less compared to that if at all the same amount if you are going to buy it from equity shares because when it happens in what happens in equity is one there would be no any interest to deduct from your taxable income second you will also have to pay tax on whatever dividends you are going to pay okay. now there are different kinds of ways how it uh, a company can borrow funds one is from the creditors lenders or also there are two other different kinds 
one being bond another being debenture of a company now a debenture or a bond is definitely something like a equity share or preference share but here there would be no any kind of ownership right given for those who have bond or uh, debentures in their name now bonds and difference of debentures are also two different kinds now bonds usually would be backed by some collateral assets whereas debentures will be solely taken by the investor based on their faith in the company which lends the debentures now bonds would be paying less amount of interest because it is backed by some collateral asset in case of risk whereas debentures would be giving you more return for the more risk that you would be taking now this certificates be it bonds be it debenture it definitely states the amount the rate of interest and the maturity of bonds or debenture now since these bonds and debentures are very much different from loans and bonds or debentures are also considered as financial instruments it is always traded in secondary capital market so for this session we shall wind it up here for the next session at 11:05 we shall continue with the some other terms of financial management so take a break of 15 minutes or 10 minutes and come back at 11 o'clock thank you class